Today is the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, August... I don't even know what the date is, but I'm hoping you do. But look where I'm at. It's such a perfect place for this great Feast of Mary. I'm at the Shrine of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal in Perryville, Missouri. I went to school here uh, many years ago, <laughs> but it's still now a shrine. You can walk through it, beautiful grounds, and an incredible chapel here. So how blessed it is that we can all gather here in prayer virtually, if nothing else. So thank you. It's Breaking Open the Word, and our Gospel comes from Luke chapter 1. This is how it goes. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Gospel, the Holy Word of God. Isn't that, uh, I'm going to get into this later, but I love that proclamation of Mary. It just sums up what I want my life to be on fire with, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, let me tell you this. A few years back, I had the privilege of visiting Greece um, and Turkey and uh, the country <laughs> and a number of others on a cruise that we went on. We flew into Athens, of course, in Greece, and we spent a couple of days before the cruise exploring the ancient sites there in Athens at the Acropolis. And it was amazing. Oh, really good beer, too, they have in, in Athens. But I was really looking forward to it, mainly because I knew one of the stops on the cruise was going to be Ephesus, the city in Turkey, where St. Paul spent much of his time, as we know from Scripture, establishing Christian churches and communities. You know, the, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesus is the town, the people who lived there, were called Ephesians. You know, I just put it together not long ago. <laughs> but oddly, that whole experience of Ephesus, it wasn't what I really remembered most from the trip. Rather, it was the morning we visited a small stone house in Turkey, just outside of Ephesus, the city, but the house was that where the Blessed Mother, Mary, lived after the death of Jesus, until her own death. It was really, the house was, was not all that big, all stone, a dirt floor. There were three rooms as you walked in on the inside with the fireplace, or uh, what do they call that, where you cook and stuff? Um, a, her <laughs> a hearth, I guess in the center, and that's where she cooked um, and stuff like, and warmed the house. It was said that the disciple John took her there and cared for her. And I remember standing in the house next to the fireplace and just feeling a chill that sent shivers through my body, just knowing that where I was standing, Mary herself stood, holy ground, standing by the hearth that she herself surely spent so much of her time cooking. God, it was amazing. <laughs> it was mind-boggling, actually. 
And I remember leaving the house and we got back onto the bus and so we went to the next place and I couldn't get the house out of my mind and I thought kind of how sad it was and maybe somehow inappropriate even that such an important person, such an amazing woman lived the last years of her life in such a modest, unassuming place with not a lot of whistles removed from society, surrounded by trees, mainly. I mean, three days earlier at the Acropolis in Athens, where I was, we visited these magnificent and opulent temples for their gods and goddesses. I mean, surely Mary deserved better than this. Our feast today, friends, is that of the Assumption of Mary. And it reminds me that our palace of beauty and temple of glory is not on this earth. Mary received her reward by returning to her son in the heavenly halls of glory, lifted body and soul. And it makes sense, really. You know, this humble, modest home that I stood in, where she lived, it really reflected the kind of woman that she was. You know, she was important, absolutely. But she wasn't larger than life, if you will. You know, she's not the kind of religious figure that, to me at least, is out in front of us. She wasn't sitting on thrones above, beyond us, but rather one with us, among those of us who struggle and suffer in life. She is there, here, helping, supporting, nurturing us. And many of you moms out there know what that is so well with your own children. See, this is how I imagine it in our Catholic tradition, that <clears throat> we have many saints and blesseds who are well known and larger than life in the communion of saints. You know, you know them, what St. Francis of Assisi, St. Paul himself, Jesus, St. Vincent de Paul, these men and women who are leading us, calling us forward into greater spiritual life with them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're, they're kind of out there in front of us, inspiring us to walk in their shoes, calling us, as it were. And that's awesome. But I don't imagine Mary being out there with them, in front of us. I see this beautiful woman behind us as we struggle to follow Jesus. She's here with us, holding us when we feel alone. You know, encouraging us when we're scared, lifting us when we fall. I mean, yes, she is the Blessed Virgin Mary. But above all, she is a mother. And that's what good mothers do. I think it's why my own grandmother, who I've talked about before, who taught me so much about the faith, had such a powerful devotion to the Blessed Mother. Because unlike the fabulous saints, you know, Mary was accessible and real to Grandma. She felt this motherly bond and connection to Mary, as I do today. And I'm not even a mother, <laughs> you know? 
Which is why I think my favorite or one of my at least top five favorite lines in all of scripture you heard today. It came from the lips of Mary herself when she proclaims, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, who is my Savior. What amazing words, right? What a glorious proclamation, especially considering the great suffering she endured in her life. So friends, <laughs> excuse me. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you. Does your soul proclaim that same message that Mary did? I mean, I know you love the Lord. It's why you're listening now or watching me here on this video today. But does your heart proclaim him? A proclamation that affects your attitudes and words, how you interact with others, how you respond to them, the choices, the decisions you'll make today. As Jesus went out, I'm going to end here. <laughs> I know you're wondering, is he ever going to stop? But as Jesus as he went out in his ministry, teaching and preaching, healing the sick, calling people to a life centered in God, there's no doubt, I don't think, that everyone there knew who Jesus' mother was. I'm sure she was there for a lot of it, a loving, devoted, scared, protective mother there at his side. And I'm sure the violence and the hatred that Mary saw directed to her son, well, it must have confused her a great deal and I'm sure angered her. <clears throat> I have no doubt she oftentimes questioned what it was all about and spent many a night sobbing and afraid which makes her proclamation all the more amazing. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. I mean, if we were suffering like she was, we'd be taking Xanax all day, you know, or smoking weed or whatever it is. But today's feast reminds us, friends, that Mary had something far more potent than that. She had a deep and abiding faith that God is in charge and all will be well. As she herself said in another part of scripture, let it be done to me, Lord, according to your will. So friends, on her Feast of the Assumption today, where she now enjoys the reward of her faith and proclamation, let us pray for her help, her intercession, that we might do the same. But just remember this, as you kneel to pray and ask her for such a blessing, don't look up to the heavens. In fact, don't look at all. Just close your eyes and you might feel a mother's love right beside you. And may that same love incarnate in God be blessing upon you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow.